All right, we're continuing to look at different signal properties. In this video, we're going to take a look at periodic and non-periodic signals. So first, the definition. A discrete time signal X of K, so again, we're working with discrete time signals here, is periodic if it satisfies this equality right here for all time K. So it is a periodic signal if X at time K is equal to time are equal to the signal x at time k plus n for some integer n, and this equality has to hold no matter what value that we put in for k. So basically this says that the signal at some time is equal to itself at some time shift in the future, and that shift amount, n, is the important quantity. We say that this value right here, this value n, is the period of the signal. That's the value at which the signal starts over and starts repeating itself over and over again. Obviously, if this equality holds for some value n, it also holds for any multiple of n. So let's say that you have a signal that's periodic and it's period with period 5. So capital N is equal to 5. That means the signal starts over every 5 samples. Well, it also starts over every 10 samples, every 15 samples, and on forever. So if you've actually found a value for n that satisfies this, you've actually found an infinite number of values for n. Well, we don't want all of those values for n, we want the smallest value for n. So that smallest value for n is what we mean by the true period. And if we want to be more precise, we call it the fundamental period of the discrete time signal. So that's one way to think about periodic signals. There's this value n at which the signal starts over and it just repeats itself over and over and over again in multiples of n, where n is this integer. Another way of thinking about a periodic signal is in terms of its fundamental frequency. So the relationship between capital omega, the fundamental frequency of the signal, and n, the period of the signal, are related by this simple equation right here. Omega is equal to 2 pi over n. And basically what we think about is this angular frequency, things repeat every 2 pi. So if I have to go n samples before I start repeating again, then 2 pi over n is the amount of radians per sample. So kind of picture walking around the unit circle. Every time I come around the circle, I've gone 2 pi radians and I start over again. So if it takes me 5 samples to do that, for example, n equals 5, 2 pi over 5 is the number of radians per sample I go as I'm walking around the unit circle. All right, so that's the core definition of what a periodic signal is. There's these core definitions of the period and the fundamental frequency. Let's go ahead and draw a few examples of what some periodic signals might look like. So here is a time domain in K. We're going to plot versus time domain variable K. And the blue dots here are just an example signal X of K. And you can see what's happening here. We have kind of this ramp that occurs and repeats over and over and over again indicated by the dot dot dots right there. So this pattern is just going on for over and over and over. And if you count how long that it takes to repeat, you see that it repeats every five samples. So here's kind of a zero. Here's the next one. Here is the previous one. So you can see that every five samples, this pattern, this kind of linear ramp starts over again. And if we want to, we can go ahead and check out that this equation holds. Does x of k equal x of k plus n for all time k? So we can just check a few points. So for instance, at time minus 3, I have a signal value equal to 2. If I add 5 to that, x of minus 3 plus 5, that's x of 2. x of 2, I'm also equal to 2, right? So that does indeed hold. And no matter what time you pick on the axis, whether I pick minus 4 or I pick a time 5 or time 6, if I add 5 to that time, I get right back to where I started. And you can see that visually here in the plot. All right, let's look at another one real quick. So this is another periodic signal. And it has a period of, well, let's figure it out. How often does this repeat? So if I pick this value right here, the next value that it kind of starts over is right here. So those are separated by 4. So indeed, this does have a period of 4. And this kind of cluster of 4 just repeats over and over and over again, all up and down the time axis. To be more precise, I probably should have put some dot dot dots right here and some dot dot dots right there, indicating that this repeats over and over and over again. Let me go ahead and do that. 
All right, so now I got the dot, dot, dots in there, a little more precise, showing that it does indeed go on forever to the right. It does indeed go on forever to the left in this pattern. So this is a periodic signal. So both these are examples of periodic signals. They actually had a period. In this case, it was n equals 5, which corresponds to a fundamental frequency of 2 pi over 5. And this example here, we had a signal with a period of n equals 4, which corresponds to a fundamental frequency of 2 pi over 4 radians per sample. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of things we could draw that aren't periodic, right? Any signal that doesn't have a period is not periodic. I didn't draw any of those, but those are easy to imagine. And this is one of those properties where you either are periodic or you are not periodic. So any signal you are given is either one or the other. It's either a periodic signal or it's a non-periodic signal. So keep that in mind as well. All right, that's it for this example. On the next video, we'll move on to the next signal property, and we'll take a look at that in the next video.